All right, looks like we're live here on Wednesday evening. Time for our Bible study uh, in the book of Psalms. We're uh, kind of getting toward the end of it. Uh, we got one more chapter after tonight. And uh, I say it's been a long study, but it's been a good study. And uh, we appreciate each one of you that have uh, gathered with us, uh, pretty faithful to uh, just about all of the Psalms. We're tonight on Psalms 149, and uh, I trust that even this Psalm will be a blessing to you. It's a song uh, or Psalm of praise, again, and, and the last, uh, I think it's the six, uh, last five or six uh, chapters, begin with praise ye the Lord and ends with praise ye the Lord, so we call it our uh, song, uh, songs of praise. But uh, actually, if you read it, uh, the book of Psalms, all of it is about praise. But we're glad you uh, came to be with us uh, tonight. We've got a couple of songs picked out, and we want to play tonight uh, with you and uh, say a few words about uh, these uh, nine verses of Scripture that uh, we've read. Uh, tonight, and, and uh, I, I just hope it'll be a blessing to you and help and encourage you to uh, get through the rest of the uh, uh, week and uh, get you ready for Sunday, amen, and uh, uh, time to uh, assemble ourselves together in the house of God and assemble ourselves together and uh, listen and, and, uh, and praise the Lord and give... Uh, a glory to his name, uplift him, and uh, encourage the saints, and uh, get everybody ready to uh, ready to go. Amen. Well, let's uh, let's pray. We have got a few on here already. I'll recognize you after the prayer, and we'll play a song and and uh, go from there. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day, for all your blessings. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for. Uh, just being God, for being up on the throne, for uh, always being patient with us, long-suffering. And Father, we thank you for your forgiveness, and we thank you for your mercy as we've read over and over in these Psalms that your mercy endures forever. And Father, we thank you for that. For we stand today in the need of mercy, not just uh, judgment uh, and justice. Amen. And Father, I pray that you uh, bless the songs. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God might take these songs and and as the Spirit uh, move these singers, that uh, each one of us might have that same moving, that same uh, uh, anointing, that same feeling of the Spirit of God as we listen. Then in the study of your Word, Lord, you know we don't know anything without you giving us the understanding and the wisdom. Help us to rightly divide the Word of truth that we might apply it to our hearts, our lives today, that we might be a people that might be pleasing unto you. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I see there's Chris, Christopher Parrish, uh, just old Chris to us. Uh, it's good to have him with us, and uh, I tell you, it's good to have him with us tonight. And there's uh, Miss Kathy uh, Messer Smith from up in uh norfolk virginia it's good to have her with us uh this evening and uh, she she never misses and uh, if she does she always backs up and watches uh, the video at at a different time and there's my sister phyllis it's good to have her from down in kingsport tennessee and there's heather uh from norfolk virginia uh, number two daughter Good to have her with us tonight. I hope she's eating some of them hot peppers uh, that we sent up there to her. And there's uh, Donnie Cross. Good to have Donnie. Hadn't seen him on here in a while. And uh, I appreciate him being on here. And it says Donna's sick. Let's remember Donna in prayer. Uh, he's uh, well able. There's my brother Carl just popped on. It's good to have him uh, with us tonight. And uh, I think that's all I see that's uh, put a comment or anything. And that's all I know to see her. I, I see there's more on uh, the number here, but uh, no one's 
Yeah. Well, there's Sandy uh, uh, Glover Worley. Uh, that's my cousin. It's good to have her with us uh, tonight. And uh, I tell you, it's uh, it's been good. Uh, I can't believe that, Heather. Uh, you got to get built up to them, you know. But uh, I, I think I'm going to have some tonight. All right. Is anybody else on here? Put your name down or something, or, or I'll just say they're not on here. Okay. Uh, got a couple of songs that uh, I'd, I'd like to play uh, tonight. And the uh, first one is uh, by the Christian, uh, I think it's the Christian Life Center. No, it, that's not the first one I'm going to play. It's... Uh, by Bobby Helms, uh, and the title of it is What a Friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. This is one that we sang at church quite often. songs we all sing a lot at the church you know uh, people sometimes think that they don't have a friend you know I don't have a friend in the world and sometimes we feel like that now, I got news for you we have a friend that will stick closer to you than a brother amen he'll stay with you he'll comfort you in times of trouble he'll be joyful when you're joyful I mean he's a friend and there's no friend like the friend of Jesus amen well, I see Ellen's on here and it's shared, and, and I appreciate her. And then there's Miss Linda Wydell from Independent, Virginia. It's good to have her with us tonight. And she seldom ever misses uh, any of our videos, and I appreciate that. Uh, these people that I've never met, uh, some of them, and I've never met, but uh, it seems like I've known them because 
of our connection here with our Bible study. I, I enjoy being around people that uh, enjoy being around God's Word, don't you? And uh, well, let's play another song and maybe somebody else will pop on here while we're singing, uh, playing this one. And uh, the title of this one, uh, and this one is by the Christian Life Center. And the title of it is Jesus is Right. Can you relate? And nothing ahead could I see but sorrow and pain. Then at an altar, one night I knelt, and I found assurance that never has left. Jesus was right for what was wrong in my life. Amen. Amen. There it is. Uh, no true words ever spoken, is it? Jesus is right for whatever is wrong in your life. It doesn't make any difference what it is. What, what you think is uh, unhelpable sometimes to Jesus is the answer to our problems and your problems and my problems. Amen? Well, we're going to go ahead and, and get started in the Bible now, in the Word of God, and and uh, do our Bible study tonight as we're closing out, pretty close, closing the whole study of Psalms out. Uh, we're in Psalms 149, Psalms 149, and uh, I want I want you to go ahead and open your Bible. So I'm going to go ahead and and read. Uh, what it says here. Let me move my Kool-Aid over here where I can grab a hold of it and get me a swallow every once in a while. All right. All right, there's Shelby Jones on, on here. We're glad to have her with us uh, tonight. And uh, that's my little, little Lux buddy over at Electrolux. Many years have gone by since then. And then, uh, 
I'm glad that we still know each other, and uh, it was an honor getting to know her and working with her. Uh, those years, she was uh, always a good worker, one of the best that uh, that I had over there that worked with me, and uh, I appreciate her. Appreciate her coming on his uh, videos with us too. Uh, things like that encourages me. I don't know about you, but it encourages me, okay? It says in the book of Psalms 149, verse number one, praise ye the Lord. Imagine that, huh? Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be their mouth, be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, again, we do thank you for this night. We thank you for the privilege that you've given us to be able to open the pages of your holy word and to just read uh, these words over and to have the fellowship of these, your children, uh, to come and study with us the Word of God. I pray that you might give us wisdom, might give us sight, that we might see the words that you'd have us to see, the, the, the message, the meaning. And Lord, I pray for our hearts to be open and to re be receptive of the teaching of the Holy Spirit tonight. Let us not be uh, forgetful hearers, as James said, but let us be doers of your word. Help us to apply the principles of your word to our hearts, our lives. May we be a light. May we be an inspiration for someone that's watching over us, watching us. Father, I, I pray for the lost that they might be saved. I pray for the saved that they might be living and walking worthy of the vocation that you've called them into. Father, we thank you again. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, we're praising God again. And uh, next, next week, when we finish out chapter 150, we'll be teaching and praising God uh, as we have been for the last four or five weeks. Uh, it's been a, a song of praise. And uh, today, it seems like the praise has been quieted. And, uh, and the reason I, I assume that the praise of God has been uh, silenced or more minimal is because of hardships and illnesses and things going on in our lives. But Paul said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, we ought to praise God uh, in the good times. And uh, and that's easy to do. But we're also to praise God in the difficult times. This comes by faith. We have to have faith in order to praise God in the difficult times. We had this past Sunday, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, 
this past Sunday, uh, my arthritis in my back and, and uh, uh, hip was so uh, so hurtful. I mean, it was just painful. I, I couldn't hardly pick up my feet from the floor to walk to the bathroom, so I was using my cane to help steady me and, and to walk in there. And while I was in the bathroom, getting ready for church on Sunday morning. And uh, yes, I did not allow arthritis or being unable to walk keep me from at least making a, an attempt to go to the house of God. And by the way, I made it to church. And uh, but I was in the bathroom getting ready combing our hair, making ourselves look pretty, or prettier. And uh, my knee uh, hit the cane, and uh, the cane fell on the water pipe that was coming from the sink to the uh, commode. And water began to go everywhere. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't walk. I couldn't get out to turn the water off. There's no turn off in there, the turnoff is above the one that goes over to the commode. And so Ellen uh, rushed into uh, Amber's and Jonathan's uh, bedroom and uh, told him uh, to turn the water off and, and uh, explain what had happened. Well, what had happened uh, on her journey in there she looked at Israel, who was asleep on the couch, and he was having a seizure. Uh, he had already turned purple. His lips was purple. His face was red all over, and he was just a shaking, uh, having a convulsion, uh, a seizure. And we were able to praise God for my cane breaking that water. Now, when the cane broke the water, I didn't praise God for that cane breaking that water. And it was Ellen that came and explained to me or shared with me that this was an act of God that my cane dropped on that water and, and broke it that she might spot Israel having that seizure. And so we could praise God now for the broken water pipe that possibly saved Israel's life. So you see, things happen for a purpose and a reason. And we that's the reason that we need to praise God for the good and the bad things that happened in our lives. So we praise God for the water breaking, which was a bad thing. And we praise God for catching Israel in time, the good thing. Amen? And so never, never get upset with God when things are going wrong in your life. But thank Him for those things because something worse maybe could have happened. And so we need to we need to understand and give God praise when we can. And I appreciate Ellen for being quick to find uh, to to be able to praise God for that thing that's bad. I mean I just I felt terrible because it happened. I felt bad because I couldn't get up and get the water cut off. And, you know, but I, after Ellen talked to me, it, it really helped me to understand or to see the goodness of God even in the bad things. And so we go to church uh, and we praise God. In song, in word, in testimony, uh, in the midst of the congregation of the saints of God. 
And if you look back about praise and, and the congregation, you go back in the days of Moses when he put up a tent outside of the, uh, the camp, and this was called the tabernacle. And this was a place that the saints of God, when they wanted to meet with God, would go to that tent. And it was called, uh, the tent was actually called in, uh, I think it's the Greek or the Hebrew one, uh, the Greek, I think, uh, congregation. So we find that, that we ought to sing praises to him when we get to church. Uh, in our churches today is not a place to murmur, complain, and to uh, cause discord. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that it is an abomination for uh, someone to cause uh, discord among the brethren. brethren. Uh, uh, amen? And, and a, lot of, a lot of people don't understand what that means. That means being at odds. And, uh, and putting up a wall between uh, individuals, amen? That's sowing discord uh, among the brethren. And uh, God would have us to stand, uh, sit, kneel, run, dance, whatever, but m praise the Lord. Uh, I know a lot of folks don't like music in the church. But did you know the Bible tells us that we are to praise God with the cymbal, with the stringed instruments. Anything that makes a joyful noise or makes a uh, sound uh, of music, we are to praise God with it. The, the harp. And uh, David was a musician that played the harp. And uh, it soothed the beast uh, in King Saul. And sometimes, just like the music I played tonight, Sometimes this music will soothe you and calm you in some of the most difficult times uh, in your life that you're going through. Uh, the good, uh, good biblical, scriptural music will soothe the beast in you. Amen. And it'll seem like, uh, like all your troubles just vanish away. Hey? Amen. But I tell you what. Uh, I, I tell you what, God, God is merciful to us, and, and He just steps in. When we're praising Him in song, whether we're listening, whether we're participating in it, that is praising God. And I don't know about you, but God, uh, uh, God really desires His children to praise Him. Amen. Uh, so it says that uh, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Well, this pretty well defines who we're to praise, isn't it? We're not to praise the preacher. Listen, he's a man. He's flesh and blood just like you. He, he's a, a sinner saved by God's grace if he's saved. And if he's not saved, he's just a plain old sinner. Amen. But preachers are nothing special uh, as far as the... Uh, uh, recognition needs I, I think you know you need to respect him the man of God but I don't think that you are to put him up on a pedestal I don't think you ought to think more highly of him than uh, he ought to be and uh, you know but uh, you know the one that we are to praise is not the singers it's not that one that can stand and make a great or oratory it is God it is him that deserves our praise. And that's what uh, the psalmist here is telling us in verse number two. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. And it was God that created man in his own image, after his own likeness. Boy, isn't that a privilege. Isn't that an honor that God chose man to be in his own image and after his own likeness. It says, let the children of Zion be joyful to their king. Again, this is not talking about uh, King David. This is not talking about King Saul. This is not talking about uh, King Hezekiah or any of the kings of Israel. This is talking about the King of kings and Lord of lords. We are to praise him 
He's the only one worthy to be uh, praised today. Amen? And uh, and if you look at verse number uh, 3, it, it tells us there, let them praise his name in the dance. Now, the dance that it's talking about is not uh, some of these sexual uh, dances that goes on. It's not the uh, it's not the dance of uh, like was in the music of uh, uh, da uh, a dirty dancing or 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 any of these kinds of dance. It's just an honest kind of you know getting in the in the uh, rhythm and in the spirit of the song and uh, just uh, holding up holy hands and worshiping God. Uh, you know, uh, David's wife uh, uh, criticized him and rebuked him for uh, singing and dancing when he's bringing the uh, altar uh, in, the covenant uh, uh, in. Uh, and, you know, David said, hey, it's up to I'm I'm praising God. Uh, this is what I want to do. This is what I need to do. And we're being commanded today to praise God in everything that we do. Listen, if it's not praising God, what you're doing, stop. It's that simple. If we're not doing what pleases God, stop doing it. Amen? And uh, and we says, let them sing praises unto him with the timbre and the harp. Uh, and it's talking about stringed instrument, piano playing. You know, I know there's some that uh, that said that uh, all piano players, all music makers that that uh, makes music in the church is going to hell. Listen, that's false. There's nothing in the Word of God that will uh, ba uh, back them up on that. Listen, in 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 the Scripture itself, in what we're reading right now, and there's no contradictions to the Word of God. It says, let them praise and sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. Just a few minutes ago, I was playing a song uh, before we came on uh, our video. And it was, the title of the song was, I'll Fly Away. And it was just simply an instrumental uh, that they were playing. It was an instrumental of I'll Fly Away. And you know what that was? They were praising God in song. No, we was not singing, but it was a song that was played with instruments. And uh, you wouldn't, uh, I, I'd love to be able to play the guitar. I'd love to play the piano, but you know what? Uh, God hadn't blessed me with that talent. Uh, we have a daughter at our church, uh, Stacy. She plays uh, uh, just about uh, any song, and, and if somebody comes in and and uh, she's never played with them, you know, and, and they ask her to play a certain way, she's always quick to give an effort to do that. And uh, she always says, I can't do it, but you know what? God has blessed her with that talent, and she praises God uh, playing that instrument, amen, in song. Eh? And, uh, and I'm talking about Spiritual songs. I'm talking about those songs that uplift Jesus. Uh, you and I have uh, have an, uh, an opportunity. You and I have the privilege. And you and I have the command to praise God. Amen. Question time right now. As I see uh, uh, Brother Jacob Kim's come on from over in uh, South Korea. And I, I see Brenda's on here now. I hadn't seen her until right now. But, you know, I, I have a question for you. Just how much, this is your own personal, don't type it in or don't say anything. This is just a thought thing for you. How much do you praise God? Actually, how much do you praise our Savior? How much time in the day do you just, uh, all, just get overwhelmed and say, Lord, I just want to praise your name. Uh, and when we go to church on Sunday or, or Wednesday or whenever we go to church, how many times have we walked in that back door and just felt like telling God, God, I'm here to praise your name. I'm here just to give you praise. Amen. And uh, where, where is the praise and the testimonies in our churches today? What's wrong uh, that we don't have anything to, to praise God for over the week? Or maybe we do and we just fail to give God uh, uh, thanks for it and praise for it in the congregation of the people. 
Amen. And uh, and I, I'm not pointing fingers, you know. They always say if you're pointing one out, there's three more pointing back at you. <laughs> right? I mean, how much praise do we give God? Uh, I, we used to have testimony after testimony in our church where people just get up and say, I've got a testimony. i got a praise. And uh, I, that's always been a blessing to me. Uh, when I hear people uh, glorifying and bragging, and that's what praise is, is bragging on God, bragging on what he's done for us. And he says, for the Lord taketh pleasure, in verse number four, uh, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. Uh, he will beautify the meek with salvation. Those that come to him are uh, repenting of their sins. And will be clothed with the salvation from God above. Amen. And I am clothed with the righteousness of Christ. I claim no goodness within myself. But I look up and I say, thank you, Lord. It's because of you that I'm born again and are headed for heaven at the passing of my days. Amen. And I, why am I left behind here? Well, he's got a, he's got a, a use for me. He's got a need for me. I haven't uh, run my course. I haven't finished uh, running yet. And he's got something he wants me to do. And uh, and when he's done with me, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm uh, And you know what? Uh, they used to sing the song. I, I can't remember the, the uh, gentleman and, and his wife sang down at, uh, down at church. I'm a winner either way. I'm a winner if I go, and I'm a winner if I stay. Amen. And that's the way I feel about it. And uh, you know, I'm 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 wanting to stay, but I'm like Paul. Paul said, "I'm in between the the two, having a desire to depart and be with the Lord, but there's a need that I stay here. And when God's done with me, when my need is done, uh, He'll take me out of this mess that we've got ourselves into. It. Amen. All right. So. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Well, this is two thoughts that I want us to think about here in, in verse number five. Uh, first, of, uh, first of all, it says, let the saints be joyful in glory. I think Brother Wayne did an awful good job of uh, giving a uh, statement at church Sunday. I, I don't think it'd be a testimony, but it was a testimony too. And it was talking about, you know, uh, about the house of God being forsaken. And why, how people can neglect the things of God, uh, but let all the things of the world, uh, they go, they jump through hoops to make the uh, pleasures of this world, uh, you know, uh, happen for them. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the Word of God, any, any obstacle set in their way, uh, they, they let that obstacle stop them from going to church. But, uh, and as he stood looking at the few people that were in our midst, in our congregation uh, that Sunday morning, uh, he saw what I see just about every service. You see people sitting there, and if, you, if there's any that's got joy... Uh, in their hearts, they have certainly fooled their faces. <laughs> Amen. Because the, uh, you don't see the joy. You don't see the happiness of people. Uh, I know, and you probably get tired of me talking about uh, uh, my daddy and, and uh, my wife's uh, daddy, Charlie Campbell and James Meek. Well, they come to church and you could see joy in them. You could, you could feel their happiness of being able to come to the house of God. And, and to fellowship with God's people and to hear the word of God and hear the songs of Zion. You can see the joy in their hearts. Today, it looks like a bunch of people going to church took a bath in vinegar. Amen. I mean, a bunch of old sire pussies, it seems like. And that we ought to come to the house of God rejoicing and have a spring in our step and a joy in our hearts and let it overflow. That, uh, you know, that the people that sit next to them that may not have that joy in their hearts might uh, get the overrun uh, of the joy in your hearts. So I'm, my, I'm begging and I'm beseeching you. I'm pleading with you. Uh, come to the house of God rejoicing 
that it's another day that the Lord hath given to us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And so it, it says, let the uh, high praises, uh, and it says, that let them sing aloud upon their beds. Well, there's one thing about uh, public uh, glorifying God and bragging on God, but the second and uh, one of the most important in when, is when you're laying on your uh, back in the bed or laying on your side, however you lay in the bed, and you're laying there thinking about all the goodness that God has done for you this day, and you glorify Him and you say, I just want to praise your name, Lord, for being with me today, for taking me uh, through this difficult journey of life, and for being with me and comforting me and giving me strength to face another day. Amen? And, and that's, the, that's the best praise is when you're all by yourself, you know, just like a prayer, when you go into your prayer closet, that's the best prayer that you can pray because you're alone with God and God uh, attends uh, to your prayers and He listens to your praise in the silence of the night. Amen. Said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. In other words, let's praise God and be vigilant to combat the evils of this life, to fight the, the battles of good versus evil. Uh, and it looks like the evil is winning, but my friend, good will conquer all evil. And we need to be vigilant. We need to uh, wake up, and we, we need to fight uh, against the things of this world. Now, I'm not talking, and I'm not calling for violence. I'm not calling for, uh, for you to get uh, go in arms. I'm talking about a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And, and we're not doing this. We're not fighting this battle, and we're not to stand up and take vengeance upon uh, uh, the Scripture says the heathen, that's talking about the unbelievers. That's talking about the sinfulness of this world, the, the sinfulness of these people, and, uh, and the punishment upon the people. Uh, but it's talking about uh, taking vengeance because of the dis, uh, dis, disobedience uh, to God and God's Word. And that is a spiritual battle that we're fighting. Many of us, uh, as a matter of fact, all of us, was on the other side of this fight one time. And someone rose up and fought the evil that we were condoning, and we came out by the grace and mercy of God. Amen? All right, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, about all that I'm, I'm going to talk about. It. Uh, verse 8 and 9 relates mainly to the times uh, uh, that this was written, like uh, uh, the kings and nobles were uh, taken prisoners, and uh, some apply it to the time of uh, uh, the Maccabees, you know, uh, first and second Maccabees, which were left out of the King James Bible, but it's in uh, the uh, King James Version with the Apopolis. Uh, but uh, they, uh, when the Jews, some, some apply it to that time, okay? When the Jews sometimes gained the, uh, the, the advantage of them and took their kings and bound them up. And, and, and it's just symbolic and it's talking about uh, the, the way that we're looking at it today. It, it's just talking about that we need to go out there regardless of who it is. And we need to stand against all of the wiles of the devil. And every fiery dart that he's throwing at us, we need to combat it. We need to stand up against it. Let's don't run. Let's, let's don't hide. But let's be bold in the things of God. And as little David with a, a slain shot and five smooth stones charged the giant, it's time that the church, it's time that you and I praise God, and it's time that you and I charge uh, those that are wicked in this land and proclaim Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, the Savior of the world, and the love of God that sh was shed upon Calvary's cross, not only to me, not only to you, but to all that would call upon His name. Amen? All right. Well, 
I appreciate you being with us tonight, and and uh, and that, like I said, next week we'll finish this study of Psalms 150. And uh, I want to ask a favor of you uh, during this time uh, uh, until next Wednesday, if you would pray about it and see if God lays upon your heart uh, what He'd have me to do, if He'd have me to uh, pick another book. Uh, to go through or to just go uh, whatever God leads me every Wednesday uh, to do, okay? So, we appreciate it. And I seen a question here uh, where Shelby a uh, asked, uh, is it wrong of me to say that uh, heart feels so heavy that I doubt myself? Uh, well, no, you know, uh, Shelby, the old devil gets on to uh, save people. And the old devil tries to convince all of us that we're not worthy, which we know we're not. And, and the old devil tries to get us to doubt our salvation because he doesn't want us to do anything. But I imagine that everyone that's on here with us tonight, and, uh, and everyone that will be coming uh, on with us in the future, uh, all of us have gone through... Uh, periods of times in our lives, and m many times uh, it's more than just one time, you know, that the old devil tries to get us to doubt that we, uh, and the purpose of that is so that we'll take our eyes off of Jesus and begin to look at ourselves in a disappointing way. Listen, uh, Shelby, keep in mind just a few weeks ago how many times it said, and thy mercy endureth forever. God is merciful, and God will forgive us, and God will help us, and God will strengthen us, because not of our goodness, but because of His mercy that He's extended to you and me. Amen? And so, uh, I, hope that, I hope that helps you uh, some. And uh, we're looking forward to, for Saturday night to have our, our prayer time. And uh, I hope... <laughs> I really hope Saturday is not the only time you pray. I want you to pray for me every day that God might help me uh, to rightly divide the word of truth and that God might give me the very message, the very words that people need to hear and myself included in that. Okay? So we're glad all of you came. I appreciate you and, uh, and for being with us. And... Uh, <clears throat> Let me say that uh, as Shelby put this question down, I just happen to see it. Uh, if uh, if you have questions during the course of this thing, uh, if I if I see it, we'll we'll discuss it with you uh, here, if you would. And if anybody else has got a comment on it, they they're free to put it on here. But I got I got to uh, I, I got to tell you that if I if I see something that is blatant. That is uh, absolutely unscriptural. I will take it off, okay? And uh, and I, I don't do that to hurt your feelings or anything, but I don't want confusion to be uh, uh, with any of my videos, okay? Uh, we love you. God loves you. And, uh, and Riverview Baptist Church loves you. And uh, we invite you to come be with us if you can. Sunday school, 10 o'clock. Preaching, 11 o'clock. And Sunday evening at... Six o'clock, come and be with us anytime that you can. And I promise you, uh, you'll have a seat if you come. Amen. All right. Well, as always, we're closing out with the idea uh, that Jesus could come at any time now because of how bad things are getting. And he's going to come over in the eastern sky. And we're going to hear a trump of God. Be ready, for you know not when the Son of Man cometh. But keep looking up. Jesus will come soon. I pray that he does. <laughs>